Let's begin now with that growing crisis on the Texas Mexico border. Unlike Trump, President Biden is not sending migrant children back to Mexico. He's allowing them to stay here in the U.S. But where do they all go? There's already an overflow center in Dallas and Midland. On Friday, another opens out in Pecos, which is out in West Texas. Our first guest, Congressman Van Taylor, a Collin County Republican who toured the Dallas camp and talked with children there. Congressman, it's good to see you again. Tell us what you saw inside when you got there. What I saw was heartbreaking. Uh, you saw uh, thousands of children, uh, 13 to 17 year old males uh, coming in from south of our southern border. Uh, who are, um, you know, in a facility that literally uh, the lease was signed last week and is full mm -hmm. this week. Uh, so just an incredible influx of these children. Uh, and, you know, we're doing, you know, the, the U.S. government's doing the very best it can in a crisis level of care. And that is, that is the words used by the officials there. This is a crisis level of care. Um, so you've got uh, 2,300 cots in one room, uh, and you have children uh, sleeping head to head to toe, um, and, you know, literally, you know, across this enormous space uh, with 2,300 cots, and they're in groups of 50, and they're being taken to showers and to, you know, five-minute supervised shower, they're going to lunch, they're going to breakfast, good dinner, uh, and, the, and the, the object is just to, to help them to survive. I mean, you're literally in survival mode. And these these are boys, ages 13 to 17, and you actually got a chance to speak with three or four of them in Spanish. Tell, tell me about that. What, what did they say to you? Well, uh, you know, they have most, of, they had all been journeying for about a month, uh, walking, uh, you know, through, through Mexico, uh, two from Honduras, uh, one from El Salvador, one from actually Venezuela, who flew to Mexico and then walked up to the border. Uh, and then they turned themselves into Border Patrol as soon as they got across the border. Uh, they spent a period of time with Border Patrol where they entered, and then uh, they, they had been in the facility uh, for a couple of days. Um, and it's just, it's really heartbreaking what they went through. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously, as an American, it really, my heart really went out to these poor children. How about comprehensive immigration reform? Everyone's talked about this since President Reagan. Sure. It's a political football on the left and on the right, but no one actually wants to tackle it. Well, I think I think that there, we we need to do it. I, you know, look, I, I was a, as you know, I was a Texas legislator, and we we did big things in small pieces. Uh, and so you you look at all kinds of different issues, but looking at immigration, I think that there are some big things that we can do, but I think we need to do them in small pieces. Um, and, you know, but what I will say is a mistake. Uh, last week in Washington, the Democrats in the House passed an amnesty bill, which sends the exact wrong signal and will actually accelerate the humanitarian crisis uh, on the southern border that's coming into our communities, right? It's right here in Dallas. Uh, it's a direct result of, of flawed, uh, flawed policy and flawed rhetoric, uh, which, is, which is reckless. Did your visit to the K. Bailey Hutchison Convention Center in Dallas, did, did that change any any policy mindset you might have? It, it really underscored how heartbreaking this is, that there is a human impact, a human effect. I mean, people are suffering as a direct result of getting rid of policies that worked without having any clue what the next, what the next step was going to be. And so now, uh, you've got some really great professionals out there doing the very best they can. I mean, I'm not talking about doctors. I'm talking about Red Cross volunteers. I'm talking about uh, uh, HHS officials, FEMA officials. Uh, and we're having to throw a tremendous amount of resources. I mean, real dollars are being spent. Uh, we're having to take cots for FEMA. We're having to take uh, toiletry kits from FEMA. We're having to take clothes from FEMA. All, you know, uh, rashes from FEMA. All kinds of stuff is having to be drawn down. We're drawing down our own FEMA supplies to handle a self-inflicted wound. This is unquestionably a self-inflicted wound. Um, and I would hope the Biden administration would take it seriously, call it what it is, and address it accordingly, and know that the way to handle it is to, is to secure the southern border. Congressman, we appreciate your insight. Thank you, Jason. Let's